Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. And of course, Merry Christmas. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 0.02% to 51,005. Ethereum up 1.54% 1 to 4136. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. Rule 774, master yourself to master the market. As a community, we focus on real wealth and a positive excellence life trend. Money is always critically important, but so too is inner and outer peace, integrity and decency, courage and honor, fearlessness, of course, empathy and love. These components of life give meaning and happiness to one's existence. They're really, really important. Rule number four, price moves in waves. Just as price moves in a wave, also our life does. We're always going up and down. And creating a positive life trend is all about hitting a level of resistance, getting a setback, accumulating strength to get and reach a support level. You're literally getting set up to blast past that previous resistance in your life to set another level of higher resistance to get a setback, to accumulate the strength, the sun will come out again, things can get really dark and you get set up and supported and pushed up to the next level. Life is always this cycle. This is a wonderful way of looking at support and resistance lines in the actual crypto market. If you just think about strength, not price and time, you can see that your life is like a wave. If you have a positive excellence life trend, the waves are going up. The wave, each wave is never meant to push you down. It's only meant to gather your strength so you can forge up the next time. If you're going through a life pullback, please know that our love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. The sun will definitely come out again and there is always hope. When experiencing a life pullback, it's easy for things to get dark. Knowing that you're worthy and unique and that you deserve kindness, love, meaning and every success in life, this can be the fuel for the next rally in your life. Rule 138, all investors become traders every time they buy or sell. New investors and traders are pulled into the crypto market because of the, of the incredible returns. But what people don't tell you is price can also go down. Investing and trading can be a very emotionally tumultuous time. When investors, new people are called into the market, they can get locked at high prices. Price can turn against them. They can get locked into that position and start making deep losses. A lot of time investors and traders that are new will actually get out of those positions and incur quite deep losses. This is part of the institutional setup that occurs inside markets and especially inside the crypto market. Every day here inside our community, we teach the smart money mindset. That's how to look at how to buy, how to understand these cycles and how to take advantage of the institutions for a change. To take advantage of the institutions, we need to become an institution of one to understand their mindset and the mind games they play on retail investors and traders. I created KSO analysis to explain the four stages that all investors and traders progress through progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. Zone one and zones two are all about certainty. When people are new to the crypto market, they get in with money that they maybe can't afford to lose. They're certain that prices will go up. They're certain that everything will work out. After all, they've seen the numbers. They've seen the incredible percentage gains and so many influences guarantee absolutely rock solid returns. It's just rubbish. 
The truth is rule 114, markets penalize certainty. There is no certainty in the crypto market. And the sooner people come to that realization, the sooner they can move from the panic zone into the blame zone. Yes, that is a movement. And then from blame zone into the patience and rule zone. It's really important to disband the concept that there is certainty, that you know absolutely precisely what the market is doing. Markets thrive on probability. Probability is not certainty. There's always a risk, a chance that things will move against you. But there is probably a much greater chance that things will move in your direction if you've correctly assessed the probabilities. The reason why I share so many rules with you is to get you out. For example, if you're in the panic zone where FUD and FOMO reign supreme or the blame zone where you feel very bad internally and you want to get into conflict with other people into zone three, which is all about probabilistic fearlessness, patience, being calm, being centered. Zone three makes volatility your best friend it's a fantastic place to be it's literally an oasis in the middle of a raging ocean which is a pretty good thing considering oases exist in the desert zone three is also the place where consistent returns come out and those consistent returns are born of an attitude an understanding of market rules there is also a 10 5 10 volatility fund existing in zone three this is where we make volatility our best friend we're actually buying the institution stop hunting behavior we know what the institutions do we align with them but we're nothing like them in zones one and zones two people can get caught in a very destructive loop as price comes down they can sell when price comes up a little bit they can buy and price resumes down and they sell this happens all the time when we look at zones one and two they suffer what is called the light switch effect people go all in or all out and typically at the wrong times it's not anyone's fault it's just a rite of passage and that should be understood all professional investors and traders have gone through the light switch effect at some stage it's not an issue the key is to just get out of zone one and zone two as quickly as possible zones three and zones four are all about probabilistic fearlessness instead of a light switch we're like a dimmer we come on slowly go out slowly we're always scaling in and scaling out of positions i saw this picture on twitter yesterday and i thought it was absolutely incredible it's like this is what we are and this shark is the institution we're like all the little fishes banding together spreading the knowledge of how sharks hunt and then we're going after the shark i just thought it was a really great picture wow so creative the other side of this is every time the light switch effect occurs in zone one and two the shark eats the fish every time we scale in and out we calm ourselves down we just look at the volatility and make it our friend we become this pack of fish that goes out and hunts the shark I created the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass to teach people the inside information on crypto technical analysis, how the institutions think and how to beat them. That masterclass is now open. It covers five areas, foundation, trend, timing, real wealth and trigger. All of these five areas need to come together. I suggest that when you're doing the masterclass, I've put exponential learning techniques in. So just do one video followed by the next by the next. I always assume this, that you've seen the previous video and I've hidden knowledge gems inside every single video. I'd just like to let you know that the foundation membership discount of 90% off is finishing on the 31st of December. Many people have reached out and asked if they could pay in crypto. I'll try to look after you. Please just reach out and let me know if you want that as an option. Please get in touch with me by email at kstandf at gmail.com. If you would like that 90% off discount. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. 
Turning to the KS model, which is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology, we can see that we're in the bull market segment of the current run. Each cycle has three divisions, bull market psychology, bear market psychology, and consolidation. We always compare the same psychologies, sunlight to sunlight, bull market activity to bull market activity to bull market activity. What we're seeing at the moment is Bitcoin's price starting to reverse, starting to come back up, which is great. And we can see the relative strength index actually starting to come up as well. This is fantastic news. It doesn't look like much, but in the past bull run, there was extreme turbulence in this run up to the exponential blow off top. The upward price momentum is expected by people in the market. So that's not something we need to look at. What we need to look at are the downturns, the things that shake people out of the market. When you're mentally prepared for 20, 30, 40, even 50% reductions in price, you're getting to the right side of the trade. That's the institutional mindset. That's where institutions live. They cause them. The smart money mindset makes three simultaneous decisions. It makes in advance probabilistic choices on what they do when price goes up, what they do when price goes down, and what they do when price goes sideways. This is very, very different from the retail mindset. The retail mindset only holds one dimension, and that dimension is often the wrong dimension, and it's given to them by the institutions. This is really important to understand. If everybody is really, really certain about something, that's the time when you need to be cautious. As was seen very recently, everybody was absolutely positive that the market was going to go down. And what has it done? The exact opposite, as we predicted. A lot of people coming from the stock market and foreign exchange are unaware that the institutions hunt stops in the crypto market. The ultimate risk management strategy is to select well in the first place and understand that stops are hunted actively by smart money. Rule 130, make volatility your best friend. Our community specializes in knife catching. We have probabilistic fearlessness. When price is coming down, we lean into that. We do exactly what the retail mindset doesn't even think about doing. Another thing that retail thinking does, it doesn't take the context of the market into consideration. In crypto, what you don't know can hurt you, as in life, but especially in crypto. And when I mean it can hurt you, it can destroy your profitability. You must look across everything you possibly can, even if you don't think that it's relevant. It is relevant in some way. If we look at Bitcoin's analysis, the first thing that everybody should look at is what is Bitcoin doing in the market? A lot of new people to the market, to the crypto market, they just look at their beloved alts. They listen to social media, they hear the news. And unfortunately, those things can be very, very damaging to your portfolio. For example, the news is generally set in motion by smart money. Let's zoom into current price action. We can see that we've overcome a number of resistance levels. Back here around the 18th of December, the entire crypto market felt the price was going to fall off a cliff. We saw that that would not be the case. And we warned people that were going short to be really, really careful. What we've seen since that point is price actually overcome several levels of resistance. We overcame this primary level of resistance, which was critically important to overcome. Another secondary resistance level at this price. We moved into the, I don't know where I'm going, price zone for Bitcoin, and we started a trend upwards. We have a resistance line playing out at around the current price, 51,000. When we get across that particular line, and it's looking probabilistic that we will do so, we start the green repair zone. What I did is create KS3 color analysis to give people a comprehension as to what constitutes a positive and negative price movement. 
we're very close to Bitcoin turning around and we know no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. We've seen this movement up on this support line. We are being constrained by this resistance line directly above Bitcoin's current price at around 51,000. Let me just get that right. 51,100. We can see that when we get above that particular resistance line, turn it to support, we're inside the green zone. This is fantastic. The probabilities will then be on our side that we're actually starting the repair. Just think back to the positive life trend, the pullbacks in life. I'll just explain. When you go through something on a personal level, you build your strength, you reach a support level in your life, and then you start to forge up. It's very rare that you will come back. You will keep on going up because you have the required strength. We can have false breakouts. Absolutely, they do occur. And in life, they do occur as well. But typically speaking, when you have the strength to overcome some issue of resistance, you go further and farther than you've been before in your own life. It's exactly the same with crypto. The reason that I did this positive life trend chart is to show you how to think about crypto. So you can almost think that Bitcoin has gone through a bit of emotional turmoil. It's had a, a series of events that have pushed it down, that made it quite sad. But Bitcoin is starting to turn around. It's starting to gather strength. It's tentative at the moment, but we're very, very close to the green area. It's really great if you can think about it like that. You'll look at crypto in an entirely different light. And that's what I'm here for. I want to reveal the curtain. I want to open the curtain on the smart money mindset. Does this mean we're 100% certain that price will increase and improve in <laughs> price? No, of course, there's no such thing as 100% certainty in the financial markets. The probabilities are on our side, but at any stage, the institutions could come in, do a wick down, test support, grab all the stops and push the price higher. They love doing that stuff, but we're aware of the games they play. That's why I say we just trade the chart we view. This chart is positive. We don't panic. We don't seek certainty either. Certainty is for the retail herd. We're the smart money herd. We don't look at that thing. We don't look from that perspective. We say, okay, if we get any wicks down, well, that will be fantastic. That will lower the average buy price. We're aware of the risks and there are always risks inside the market. The key is to just literally place your buy orders at level of support in the market hoping for some kind of long tail resistance to hit. It may or may not, and you may need to move your levels up. That is how professionals trade this market. It's always incredibly valuable to understand retail sentiment. The fear and greed index is all about giving us a window into that. We can see that the amount of fear in the market has been fairly extreme at the moment but there's starting to be a little bit of optimism in the market at the moment. That's terrific. That's what we actually need. So long as you have your in advance probabilistic choices made, you don't need to worry which way price goes. You already have your strategy. You are not caught off guard. Rule 28, opportunities reset daily. This is just like in life. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. What matters is what you do today. It's the same in crypto. Crypto can change around dramatically within just one day. That's why we need to keep our finger on the pulse all the time. Let's have a look at our first group of eight. We can see Bitcoin overcoming resistance. It has a lot of support below it, and it has a lot of support to this left-hand side of the chart as well. That's looking quite good. We can see Ethereum is looking quite good, moving up on support with strength. Very nice technical pattern. Binance coin also incredibly strong. Solana starting to move up. Didn't even come back and touch this support line. Very nice. 
Ada Cardano seeking to make a play for its resistance line around $1.70. We can see XRP just had a little bit of a retrace, but it looks very good, looks quite powerful. Dot starting its run. And we can see Luna. Luna has done so incredibly well over this period of time. It's a really interesting thing to note that as crypto technical analysts, we don't care so much about the fundamentals. Of course, we look at the fundamentals. They're important to understand from one perspective, but the fundamentals will come out in the charts. That's why sometimes you can see a particular crypto that is such a good project, but it's been hammered down. The, the actual technicals tell you the truth of the story. Are investors interested? Yes or no? And how interested are they? You can see with Luna, investors and traders are very, very interested in Luna. That's what we look for. Having a look at the next day, we can see Doge getting above its resistance line. That spike was an Elon spike, but new spikes are very temporarily lived. And that's why you need to be careful about buying on the news because you may find yourself holding something that everybody is just now sold into. Looking at ABAX coming up very nicely, slight retracement here. Why is that? Because Bitcoin is retracing. This is just the nature of the crypto market. Any little pullback in Bitcoin will be over exaggerated in the alts and any increase in Bitcoin will also be over exaggerated. That's why it's critically important to understand Bitcoin's price action. SHIB has done a very nice bounce. Looking at Matic, Matic is seeking new highs, doing very, very well. Structurally, it looks excellent. Litecoin is coming up to a level of resistance. I asked a question in the last episode, which was the better one? Litecoin, Matic and AVAX and why? I put a little note here. What we're actually seeing, Litecoin is weak from a technical perspective compared to, for example, AVAX and Matic. Now, which is the better choice between AVAX and Matic for a trader? Don't forget, there's a different mindset with investing. For example, if you love Litecoin and you want to invest everything in Litecoin, for example, I would never recommend investing everything in anything. But if you did, that is an investing mindset. The trading mindset is very different. We have a store of money. Traders almost look at the latest fashion. What's hot? And they put it up the front of the store. What's gold? They put at the back of the store. What's on sale? They put on the on sale table, for example. But the stock is money and turnover is key. It's really good to know the traders are always taking profit. Returning to our example then, what are we suggesting? Is it better to get into Matic or better to get into AVAX? If we start to look at Matic, we can see we've had one bounce and now we've got a secondary level showing strength. What do we see here with AVAX? One bounce, two bounces, up, three bounces. Which one is earlier? Matic is earlier. Which one could have more potential upside? AVAX, which is more well along the path, or Matic, which is just kind of getting started? The answer is Matic. And many people pick Matic correctly. Congratulations. Many retail investors and traders just new to the crypto market would pick Litecoin under the concept that it's just getting back to this particular resistance. Okay, let's carry that forward. If it gets back to resistance around the 186 mark, what's the next probable thing that will happen? It will hit resistance, which is kind of a wall, kind of like a life setback, and the price will go down. What's actually happening here? What we can see, this upward support line, this one is a lot longer, has been in play for a lot more bounces. We have less bounces here, but more powerful bounces. This is showing inherent strength. Does it mean it won't retrace? Well, we certainly hope not. We're buying at support levels down 
and we're very patiently waiting. You may have to wait weeks for a particular order to be filled, even if you're trading, and that's okay. The concept of day trading, for example, just getting in and getting out, that is certainly one way to do things, and you can do it that way if you feel comfortable. But a very, very good way is to just buy at orders of support and wait for price to come to you. That's a much better introduction to trading and one that I would more likely recommend to the, the vast majority of people. Well done. We had a really good discussion in the comments section on YouTube. Fantastic, everyone. Nice work. And for those picking a different crypto, it's not necessarily wrong. It really comes down to what you believe in and you just have to do the analysis afterwards to see what effectiveness there is. Okay, let's continue with Uni. We can see Uni is still quite under resistance and it's under dual levels of resistance. It's got a bit of pressure in there. Algo, we can see Algo has overcome a level of resistance. The next area is around the 183 mark. We can see Chainlink starting its run up. Next level of resistance around 2770. Looking at the next date, we can see Bitcoin Cash just starting to turn around. When it does, there's going to be a lot of sellers trying to defend this line, this resistance line, and push Bitcoin's price down. Just be aware of that. We want to try and get on the other side of the line, for example, like MANA and of course, like Axie Infinity, this looks really good from a technical perspective. Looking at Tron, TRX, still under resistance. Looking at MANA, very nice, it's making its run. But do we buy at market? The answer is never. That is rule. That is a rule. Never ever buy at market. You can see many influencers do it on YouTube. It's just crazy behavior. Maybe they're just trying to demonstrate how to get into a crypto, but no professional investor or trader would ever do it. The truth is in the crypto market, you have leveraging built into cryptos. Have a look, for example, at MANA. From around the 27th of October, MANA shot up 536%. This is the kind of crazy volatility that exists in the crypto market. People point this out when they want to suck you into things. But look at the other side. When MANA went up 536%, it then reduced about 55%. They don't tell you about the other side. This is the side you need to keep your eye open for. When people get into actual leverage trading, they get their accounts blown up very quickly because the volatility will naturally take your account out. It's designed to do that. Please do not trade anything other than spot, which is literally swapping one crypto for another. If you can't hold it forever, it's better just not to touch it. Of course, if you're a professional trader, you can do anything you want because you know all the rules. But if you're just getting into the crypto market, if you're not sure about support and resistance levels, and please just don't touch leverage under those circumstances, it will kill your account. No need to be in a hurry. Just get your skills right first and then scale. We can see Axie Infinity looking really good. That technical bounce is exactly what we anticipated. Stella coming up to its resistance line. Good on you, Stella. VeChain, VET still under resistance, but starting to improve. Good to see. Adam, Cosmos getting above its resistance line will attack its next resistance line at about 32.76. FTX token, FTT. We can see starting to get above resistance. Fantastic. One level of resistance at 50.62. Another key one at 61.53. Having a look at the next date, EGLD consolidating will potentially make a play for the resistance line around 336. ICP still under heavy resistance. We can see Filecoin also under heavy resistance. Sand has broken out and hit a resistance line, an upward resistance line. 
This is really healthy price action when you consider, for example, going into SAND or FILE or ICP. Please let me know in the comments which one you would prefer to go into and why. There's some really important concepts when it comes to selecting different cryptos. If you would like to discuss those, they're actually really important to get your thinking in a correct frame of mind. So the question is ICP or Filecoin or SAND and why? If you wanted to enter, the other question is whereabouts would you enter? Okay, let's have a look. Let's keep on going. HBAR coming up to a level of resistance. Theta token just taking on its first resistance line, seeking to turn that to support. If it manages to do that, and it probably will, we probably expect a next level around the $6.50 mark. Ethereum Classic starting to turn around. And near. Near is very spiky. Just beware, these spikes often reverse. If we see this very big spike up, it just literally reversed. We have another big spike up. This is very, very volatile. This is almost like gearing on steroids. This is why you don't need to actually take on leverage. If you're paying a daily fee or you're paying any fees, for example, to maintain a trade, you haven't bought at spot. Spot is simply where you just swap one crypto or US dollars or whatever it is, whatever your local currency is for that particular crypto. You can notice here we had a big spike and it literally came right back down to the previous level. Before it took off, we had this big spike and it came down lower. We had this big spike and it came down lower. Be aware of this volatility. Please do not FOMO. Having a look at the community favorites, we can see Veracity is backing off from the resistance target we set a couple of days previously. It may come down to that lower support level at 0 0.03428954. We can see Icon has Icon has been doing really, really well as we anticipated, because when Bitcoin turns around, we can see the fingerprint, Bitcoin's fingerprint in the background, just like on VRA. When Bitcoin improves, these cryptos are going to do well. That is the relationship. That's the gearing relationship. Okay, let's continue. DGB, still under resistance. What about IOTA? It's hitting levels of resistance, but it's got strong price here. It's seeking to turn that into support. It will do so at around 142. Stacks is continuing to look really, really good. We've got a very nice upward support line here. And just be aware, crypto can wobble around very significantly. So we're trying to actually lower the price as the price goes up, lower our average buy price as the price goes up. Now, what does that mean? It means that we don't buy at 305. We try to buy at, for example, 1968. Even though the price is going up, we're trying to lower where we buy. That's the interpretation. We don't buy on the way down. We buy on the way up. Okay, a bit of a pro tip in that one. RLC, we can see RLC turning around, looking really nice. TRB is looking like it's getting out of trouble. Good on you, trouble. Get up there. We wanted to go up to this at least resistance line that will play out at around 53.51. But there, we would expect a bit of selling throughout that particular area. Cartesi is doing its thing. It's making its way back up. Cartesi has a lot of inherent volatility and that can create some very spiky opportunities for people. And it's a very good project too. Let's have a quick look through the metaverse. What we can see is MANA very nicely supported, getting through multiple levels of resistance and starting to rock and roll. MANA is looking really good. Axie Infinity, we said, coming into this particular support line, zooming in, still has another level of resistance above it. We just keep that one in mind. Engine Coin bouncing really well. What incredible power here. SLP, 
of course, I understand the use case for SLP and Axie Infinity. What you might like to consider is when a particular crypto is under duress, under stress, there's always a reason for it. It means that people aren't putting their money in. It could be just that there are so many other tear away, break away opportunities, for example, like Matter and San and Engine and, and the others, ILB. But please be aware, you want to be actually sitting inside a crypto that's going up wherever possible. You don't want to suffer opportunity costs. Let's have a look at sand. Sand is looking really good. A lot of different supports. When you actually get into drawing support lines, for example, many in the community, especially those going through the masterclass, want to extend the lines to the right. I would suggest you don't. Now, the reasoning and logic behind that is that I want you to always think about not fitting current price action with your line. People tell themselves a story about what something is doing. Please delete that story. Just go for it in terms of building capability. It's good to save time sometimes, but in other cases, you really need to spend the time to just understand where price is going. For example, if you draw a line into ILV and you just extend it along a reasonable level of support, in the future, as ILV's price comes out, you want to drag this line, not right extend it. I know a lot of people say that that's a really good shortcut. Unless you're an expert, don't use it. Just get your eye used to what is happening with price and not doing a bias of altering lines to fit different narratives. It's really important to do. It's part of the foundation process. Okay, so getting back to it, sand is looking very nice. It's being supported over resistance. It's going to have some clear air above it. But does that mean it just goes straight up? No, absolutely not. Every crypto will wobble around a bit. You can see here that sand had a very big drawdown. These are always happening inside the crypto market. ILV, we can see ILV doesn't have the same strength structure as sand. Keep this in mind. Also, Decentraland is doing a lot of consolidation here. This is really good. It just needs to overcome this area of resistance back here, and it's going to start to look even better. Alice, still under resistance. CHR, turning around. I'd like to thank all the very kind and generous community members who've reached out and bought me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. Thanks so much, everyone. I'd like to especially thank someone who just recently came in. I am glad that I found the chance to meet Ken via the YouTube, via YouTube and join the masterclass. As told by Ken, the masterclass is practical and immediately applicable, which you can tell the comments were designed carefully to let us follow step by step. This is a really, really good point. Many, many years ago, and for many years, I was a lecturer in first and second year stats. I very much focused my students on learning all the foundations that allowed them to become A grade students in mathematics. I'm doing exactly the same thing here with crypto technical analysis. Please go step by step. Don't miss any lessons. It's really important you don't miss them. It's never the same thing. Even when I do revision, I'm throwing new ideas every single time. I won't shoot a video unless it has something new for you. Okay, getting back. Also, it helps us fix the wrong concepts. The more we know, the less we will be scared. Absolutely, totally. After I know more from the charts, I do feel much more calm when I see a big red bar. Well done, my friend. That's excellent. The masterclass is worth the original price, and I am lucky to have the generous discount from Ken. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, my friend. And thank you, everybody, for your very kind comments about the masterclass. I'm so happy and so appreciative that it's helping out so many people. And also another person that was remaining anonymous, 
thanks for your help with the masterclass. I've started and am taking it slowly, but enjoying it. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you, my friend. Taking it slowly is the absolutely important thing to do. As foundation members, you have four years access to the content and I will continuously update, upgrade and increase the amount of content that you can view. Always keeping everything current to the current market conditions. Taking it slowly is great. You need your solid foundations. That's absolutely fantastic. It's a very beautiful time of year and Christmas is coming at different times per country. So I just want to wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. Much love to you and all your family. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Have a very beautiful and Merry Christmas. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.